right, if you will, please take your Bible, turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 12. Matthew, chapter 12. Excuse me. Matthew, chapter 12. Oh, Wednesday. Um, And Sunday's Father's Day. Next Sunday's Father's Day. Just throwing that out there. Uh, What's that? Oh, yeah, if you would pray for Bethany, she's having her gallbladder taken out on Wednesday. Um, but uh, also, Wednesday night, um, we're going to have a meeting, just uh, not really even a meeting. I just want to kind of update you with some where, the, where we are with the building um, and the direction we're looking at going. Like I, I mentioned to you, the price of the building has now doubled what we were normally looking at, which was higher than we wanted to go. Um, but uh, the Lord has not uh, allowed, he doesn't have, uh, we haven't stopped yet. So, uh, and I've always felt like, just like you, like if there's a path to go, we're going to go it. And, uh, but I want to give you an update on that and um, just kind of show you where we are and uh, what we're looking at next. And so we still want to break ground, amen. And um, so uh, anyway, so that'll be Wednesday right after the service. So uh, we'll just get together as a church and just do that, okay? All right, Matthew chapter 12, Matthew chapter 12, verse uh, 43, verse 43, please. And this is uh, really a lot different type of message than I would normally uh, bring on a Sunday morning. And so I'm not real comfortable with it. Uh, because we're going to be talking about uh, the devil some, and I don't like talking about him. I don't like, I don't want to give him any credit that he doesn't need or any any, and I, I don't want to do that. But the Bible does uh, teach us about it, and so I, I felt led to do this this morning. Um, and in Matthew chapter twelve, verse forty-three, it says, "When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man." He walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Then he saith, I will return into my house from whence I came out. And when he was come, he findeth it empty and swept and garnished. Um, I guarantee it wasn't like that when he left. And it won't stay that way when he gets back. Uh, verse 45, it says, then, he go, then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they entered in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this generation. Um, I, I, I made a, I wrote a title for this, uh, this this morning is The Devil Walketh Through Dry Places. And then, um, but then I had another one that says, does the devil have his eye on you? He's looking for somewhere to go. And then, uh, but I didn't like those, they're just so heavy, but they're true, but they're heavy. Uh, So this one, uh, I think we'll call it this one, let God move in. Let God move in. Amen? Uh, That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Let's pray. Father, as we come to you, Lord, we pray and ask that uh, that you would keep back the wicked one. And God, give our minds uh, um, uh, freedom to uh, think on you and that the Spirit of Christ could... Have his way in our hearts today, please. Uh, God, I I know that probably most, if not all of us, have things on our hearts today that could distract us. And and, uh, Lord, help us to, in these moments, uh, give you our attention, our our thoughts. And and God, that you could help us where we are today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You know, I was thinking about moving. I don't know why I'm thinking about moving. Um, 
But, uh, you know, just so happens that some of the people around here have been moving or in the process of moving. So the Carters have been packing and packing and packing and selling stuff. And, and the orcs are packing and packing and packing and selling stuff and trying to clean. And Bob and M just moved uh, Friday. Well, it's been like a week and a half. But uh, packing and packing and moving stuff. And, man, uh, I don't know what everybody else is doing, but I thank the Lord for those that have helped and and praise the Lord for people to help. It's a lot of work. And, and they're still not done. I was like, uh, when we got the last stuff pushed in the house, I was like, okay, now you got to put it away. And, uh, you know, but uh, moving, moving. And then, uh, let's see, the, the, the Brandenburgs are, that's why they look so tired, okay? They've been moving and moving. And, and uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, uh, I've always hated moving. Uh, we, when we were, Newlyweds, we moved many times, four times in like six years. Wherever the rent was the cheapest, man, that's where we went. And uh, you know, but just moving and packing. You know, but when you when you when you move out, uh, you got to clean the place and patch the holes and paint it and and get it ready, right? And um, the Bible says here, uh, when the devil leaves, the Bible says he findeth it. Uh, when he comes back, it's empty, it's swept, and it's garnished. Uh, you know, empty means empty. Swept, it's been cleaned up and, and put back together and garnished. Now it's even been prepared and painted and decorated uh, for the next person to move in. And the Bible says that uh, so he leaves for whatever reason, if he got kicked out or if he thought he could find somewhere better, but he leaves, and the Bible says he, he walks. The Bible says the devil walketh through dry places. He says, you know, uh, I really can't find. He's looking for somebody. And, uh, and sometimes he says, you know, there's not much out here, man. The rental market's like hot right now, and everybody's moved in. And, and uh, so I'm just going to go back where I was. And, and he goes back, and guess what? It's still for rent. He says, man, I'm going to move back in. In fact, uh, the market's so dry, uh, I know some other guys that are looking for a place, so we're going to bring them along, and we're all going to just move in. You know what he does when he moves in? He trashes the place. You ever see somebody move in and just trash the place? If you haven't, go so winning, like Brother Lewis was saying. You'll see some horrible, horrible conditions that people live in. But you know when they move in, it's always nice. It's so, I think Brother Tim does that. He goes in and fixes them up and puts new carpet in and fixes the holes in the walls and gets it ready for the next. And, uh, but then people move in and they can actually trash the place. He walks through dry places. The, now, uh, the devil, uh, as he walks through dry places, and, and what we're talking about here is, uh, um, okay, you know, in the Bible, and we're, not, we're going to do a little bit, but not a lot. Uh, the Bible talks about demons and the devil and demon possession, de demonic influence. Uh, you know, we read about that in the Bible. We read about, uh, you know, the things that, the, that demons actually made people do. And then we get to the book of Revelation, and it says, amen. Well, guess what? When that happened, that doesn't mean all that stuff went away. God put it in there for a reason. Hey, listen, the demons are as active today as they've always been. In fact, they have more places to live. There's more people uh, on planet Earth than there's ever been. So uh, demonic oppression, demonic possession uh, doesn't just go away. But when's the last time we've thought about it? Demonic activity in the Bible is the same demonic activity today. Uh, you say, well, I don't, I don't know if I've seen what I've seen in the Bible. Yeah, he's a good deceiver. I'll guarantee you when the, when the devil's working, he doesn't want you to think it's him. He wants you to think it's somebody else or something else. 
Um, let's look at a couple verses, um, a couple places. Matthew chapter 17, please. Matthew chapter 17. Your Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 17. I think we'll turn one and I'll, I'll read another one just, just for time. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 17, it says, uh, verse 14, please, verse 14. I want you to notice something as I was thinking about this. And I hope, I hope we can, the Lord helps me to just kind of bring my thoughts together. I'm not, again, I'm not real comfortable with this. And, uh, and um, well, let's go. Okay, verse 14, it says, When they were come unto the multitude, there came unto him a certain man kneeling down to him, saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic. He's crazy. My son is crazy. He's out of his mind, okay? And sore vexed. He's got lots of troubles. He's got lots of problems. And he's not thinking right. He's not thinking like a normal person. Um, and oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. He's hurting himself. He's, you know, we can read, there's other places, they cut themselves, they hurt themselves, they're, they're abusing their bodies. I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Jesus answered and said, what? Oh, faithless. Now, let me just, let me just say this. As, as you read these verses today, as you, I want you to think about this. What he's saying is, okay, how long is it going to be before you guys believe this is real? How long are you going to believe that what I'm telling you is the truth? There's a, uh, there's a physical body and there's a spiritual body. There's physical wars and there's spiritual wars. Uh, just like there's physical life and, and, uh, and spiritual life. There's uh, physical death and spiritual death. There's, 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 a, there's a world, there's a war that we don't see. And he says, oh, faithless generation, he's, he's preached it, he's talked about it, he's told them about heaven and hell and, and salvation. And he says, how long is it going to be before you believe this, is what he's saying here. Oh, faithless uh, generation, he says, uh, and perverse, you know, unbelief leads to perverseness. And there's a whole lot more there, but uh, um, he says, oh, faithless generation. He didn't say they were bad people. You know, I was thinking about our generation or where I came from, good people, hardworking, uh, if you will, god fear. They believed in God. They believed in, in uh, hard work and being honest and, and uh, uh, you know, being moral and, and treating people good. But, hey, listen, but if you leave God out, it's still a faithless generation. And, and so, uh, to, me, to me, that generation cleaned and swept, and they got the country right and good and, and prosperous. And then, then the next generation moves in, and there's a big cavity. And, what, and where did they go with that? Well, um, anyway, so, uh, so, so the Bible says here, he says, Oh, faithless uh, generation, how long shall I be with you? Uh, how long shall I suffer you? He says, uh, you know, how long is it going to take? He says, bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. The what was cured? The child. The child. This man's son. He knew, he knew there was something wrong with his son. Let me just read this one to you. The Bible says in Luke chapter uh, 9, verse 37, it says, And it came to pass on the next day, when they were come down from the hill, much people met him, and behold, a man of a company cried out and said, Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he is my only child. 
And lo, the spirit taketh him, and, and uh, he suddenly crieth out, and teareth him, and he foameth again, and, and bruising him hard, uh, hardly departed from him. And I besought thy di disciples to cast him out, and he could not. They could not. And Jesus answering said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring your son hither. And as he was coming, the devil uh, threw him down and tear him, and Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child. And, as, uh, and uh, there are others, but as you read these verses and you think about this, he's after our children. God, <clears throat> I'm not sure what all that means, but, but I do know this, that the, God made a point to say that the devil is looking for somewhere to go, and he's after our children. And I don't, I don't know uh, what can hurt more than affecting your children. You think about this. The devil can't hurt God. He can't do anything to God. What's he go after? He goes after God's children. You know, the devil can't hurt God. The devil can't do anything to God. But when he gets us... That hurts the Lord, just like he's after your children and my children. Hey, listen, um, the Bible says, let me show you a couple of verses um, and just, just bear with me. In, in Ephesians chapter 2, if you turn there, please, Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to go to, if, or, or, let's go to chapter 6, Ephesians chapter 6, and then we're going to go to Job. I just want to show you something. Ephesians chapter 6 and Job chapter 1, please. In the book of Ephesians chapter 6. <clears throat> Got it? The girls are all in their place looking at me. The boys are like, ah, I think it's in here. Is that, is that Old Testament? Is Ephesians Old Testament? You know, and they're... Okay, it's good, guys. Okay, I'm messing. Remember, it's Boys Against Girls, the Vacation Bible School. Boys are going to win, amen? All right, Ephesians chapter 6. Look at this. Just, just I'm, I'm going to sh share these verses with you. Just think about it. We really don't have a lot of time to spend on any of them. Uh, but verse 11, verse 11. The Bible says, let's talk about this battle, okay? Uh, verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God, that ye, may be, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles or the tricks, the trickery of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Hey, listen, you ever watch the news and you feel like, man, the world is just sometimes a dark place? Well, that's why. Because there's a ruler of the darkness of this world, the shadows, the, the, those, uh, um, anyway, um, the rulers of the darkness of this world against spiritual wickednesses in high places. In other words, the thought there is very powerful spiritual wickedness, spiritual forces, the Bible says, are out there. And we need, to, we need to think about that. We need to understand. Now, we don't have to dwell on them, but we need to realize they're out there and they're after you. You know, the things that I know some of you are going through some things. Well, hey, listen, there's somebody behind that and pushing that. It doesn't mean that person is demon possessed, but there's somebody influencing them and, and pushing that. Okay? And that's why, as Brother Lewis said in Sunday school, Prayer. If we can't fight this battle, 
We, we, we don't have the wherewithal. Or we don't have the strength. Uh, we need God. Okay? Uh, now, <clears throat> if, you, uh, if you're saved, I, I believe the Bible teaches that you cannot be demon-possessed. You can be uh, oppressed by the devil, certainly, but you cannot be demon-possessed. But if you're not saved, you actually could be. And there's, there's, there's something to that, but, but that, there, there's the difference. But uh, hey, listen, um, but uh, just because we're saved doesn't mean he, he just throws up his hands and says, oh, well, lost that one. As far as salvation, you're saved, but he's still going to bother you. And, uh, you know, the, the, this, the, what we read in Matthew chapter 12, when the, when the devil leaves and comes back and, and the place is clean and swept and, and he moves back in, he has seven, seven other demons. Uh, now, I believe that's talking specifically about demon possession. But I do know uh, the principle is, too, that uh, the devil's looking for somewhere to go. He's looking for somebody that has a room for rent, if you will. Somebody has some space available. And he's after our children. I'll guarantee that the Bible makes that very clear that he's after our children. Uh, take your Bible, if you would, please. Turn to Job chapter 1. Hey, uh, let's go up 2. Okay, Job chapter 1, please. You know, uh, again, I, I'm not sure how all this works. I'm not sure how all the, the, the spiritual wars work. I mean, I know there's prayer and fasting, and, but I do know the devil, the Bible. Jesus said, the thief cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. And uh, if he can't, he can't take your salvation, but he's going to do as much of that as possible. I'll guarantee it. I've seen it. You've seen it. If you've been around any time, <clears throat> any amount of time, you've seen that happen. And uh, he'll wreck your life. He'll wreck your family. He'll wreck our church if he has access. And that's what he, that's what he uh, is determined to do. Okay? Job chapter 1, uh, verse 7. <clears throat> And you know, hopefully you know the story about Job. If not, you ought to read it. How this Job was a, a uh, godly man. Okay. Um, and uh, verse one, verse 7, it says, The Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh, comest thou? Now look what Satan says. Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. And then what did the Lord say right after that? Have you considered my servant Job, right? What's that mean? It means that Satan was looking for somebody. He was looking for an opportunity. Okay? Uh, you don't have to turn. I'm going to read it. But if you'd like to, you're welcome to. First uh, Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. In 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, this verse, now Job was a Christian. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8 is for a Christian. Not for an unsaved, okay? Again, uh, if I was unsaved, I would want to get saved just for the fact that I need to be saved and, and uh, you don't want the devil to get a hold of you there. Uh, and damn you to hell forever. I mean, you don't want that. But as a Christian, uh, hey, listen, he is looking for you too. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 5, and verse 8, it says, be sober. Uh, the thought there is, hey, listen, you need to, uh, you need to be thinking straight. You need, to, you need to understand this. You need to be thinking straight. Be sober. Be vigilant. Okay, you need to be watchful and aware. Okay, because you're what? Your adversary. He's the enemy. That's what that means. He's your enemy. The devil, as a roaring lion, what's he doing? Walketh about seeking whom he may 
devour Christian. Christian. Now, he's looking for uh, uh, someone he can devour. Now, we've said it a thousand times, but, you know, you watch, you can go, to, go watch any of those nature shows, watch, go to YouTube, watch, about, watch the lions. They always go after what? The weak and injured. The weak and the injured. Hey, listen. That's why, that's why he works so hard on getting your feelings hurt. That's why he works so hard at getting you offended. That's why he works so hard at, at bringing you down and breaking you away. You know, when you're in a pack, you're, it's safer. If, you could get, if, they, if he could break you away, um, you're more vulnerable. And the young, the young. And the Bible says he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. The Bible says the devil says, I'm in the earth, I'm walking up and down, and he's just, he's just looking. And I got thinking about that. What's he looking for? What if he, okay, so, uh, so God says, hey, Satan, what you been doing? He said, I've been walking up and down in the earth. What you doing? I'm seeking whom I may devour. He does this. He's, He's doing this every day, all the time. He's just, hmm. You know, the devil can't read your mind. But he can, he knows, he's an expert at human behavior. He knows your face. He can tell by facial expressions. When you're talking, he does this. He speaks Spanish. He speaks Filipino. He speaks, right, he's looking. He's just doing it. You don't even see him. Let's turn the air down one. Okay. You don't even see him. But he's doing this. Could you imagine? He's doing this. He's, he's just looking. It's good to see you, Mary Beck. But, you know, he doesn't say that. But, but he does that. He's doing that today. And Jesus said, how long is it going to be before you believe this? Hmm. The Robles has escaped the hurricane. Praise the Lord. (laughs) Ruined their vacation, but escaped the hurricane. Amen. But he's, he's just looking. Yep. Hmm. Isn't that creepy? <laughs> but it's true. That's what the Bible says. He's looking. He's walking up and down. He says he's a hungry lion looking for somebody to eat. He's just looking. Hmm. Yeah. He's, he, he he watches real close. You ever see those lions are just sitting there? They're just watching. They're just, they're just waiting for an opportunity. And then he, uh, he moves on in. And he says, ah, the young ones. He, I believe he is after everybody. But he loves the young ones. He says, man. He says, hey. Looking in the pockets. <laughs> he smokes. <laughs> Didn't know that, did you? <laughs> Just graduated, right? He says, hey, ooh. Mm. You know, you know, Satan? I'm serious. Satan goes through your phone. He knows everything you've looked at. He can't read your mind. But when you're alone, he's with you. He can be with you. He goes through your history. And he can tell by that some weak spots. Guaranteed. What's he looking for? That's what he's looking for. He does it to young people. He does it to old people. He gets around a little easier, right? (laughs) How 
well, did you ever wonder how did Satan get that guy's son? Why, why isn't he in all the kids? You can open the door. The Bible teaches that very clearly. You can open doors that he can get through a lot easier. I used to have a snake. I used to like snakes, and I'd keep them in the house. And, and um, my wife just, she's against it. So uh, <laughs> I used to catch snakes, and I'd, I'd catch snakes. I'd bring them home, and I'd keep them. And, and uh, you know what I noticed about snakes is uh, when you put them in a, uh, anything, the first thing they're doing is they're, they're just looking. Looking for one thing. An opening. Got that little tongue. And it's amazing what they can get through. I had a big one, six, six, six and a half foot long in the house. And it's amazing what they can get out of. I went to, to go see my snake and he was gone. I didn't tell mom. And, uh, you know what? And uh, about a month later, I found him in the house. I don't know where he'd been. I don't know what he was doing. But he was in the house, and we never knew it. You know what the Bible calls the devil? The Bible says in Revelation, that old serpent, the devil. He's looking. He's looking for an opening. And I don't know how he got that guy's son, but he found something. He was, he was more open than the others. Now, I believe that if Satan concentrated on you all the time, he could wear you down even worse. But he can only be, the Bible says that the devil is not omnipresent. God is omnipresent. He can be anywhere all the time. The devil can't. The demons can't. They can only be at one place at a time. They can't read your mind. So there's only so many of them. They're looking for the best opportunity is what they're looking for. They can't get all our, they can't do that to everybody, but they're looking for the best opportunity. They're looking for the most, they're looking to do the most damage they might be looking at you, and they can't get to you, so they're going to work on your kids. Or they maybe can't get the kid, but they can get the dad or the mom. They're looking for the best opportunity. So um, I was thinking about this. The devil's after our children. The devil's after everybody. But think about our young people in particular the last few years. Um, prayer is not allowed in schools. It's against the law, right? Or whatever. Most people think it is. Prayer is not allowed in school. The Bible is not allowed in school. So they say. I mean, um, it's getting to the place where they don't want you to think, just indoctrinate. Um, authority is torn down in the home. You ever watch, no, just subtle things. You ever watch, when I was a kid, cartoons used to be funny. I mean, they were hilarious. We, as a kid, I didn't like waking up. Well, I still don't like waking up. But as a kid, you know, Saturday, you want to sleep in. But I got up early. You know why? The cartoons were on, and they were like, they were fantastic. They only came on Saturday morning, and they were fantastic. But I watched, you know, I've watched some cartoons and things now, and you watch the family. You know who was always the buffoon in the family? Dad. Dad. And we laugh at it, but it's a mindset, you know, Children don't look at their authority like they used to. And, and uh, so, so uh, hey, listen, now, now if you, uh, you want to say somebody, 
says they want to be a, a girl when God made them a boy. Now you're, uh, mm -mm, you, you can't say that. That's bad, you know. Uh, what's wrong with that? I mean, we're, we're, we're you know, think about this. There's no God. Uh, there's nobody that, uh, there's no authority over you. You can do what you want. And, uh, hey, listen, we'll let you do things. And don't tell your parents. And, uh, and hey, listen, if you want to be a boy, you can be a boy. If you want to be a girl, you can be a girl. And, and, uh, and we'll help you with that. And, and um, where are our kids? You say, well, what's wrong with that? Haven't you watched the news lately? Haven't you watched the news lately about young people? Why are they doing this? You say, oh, guns, guns, guns. You know, when I was a kid, there was guys that had pickup trucks. You know what they had in the back window? It's called a gun rack. And there would be at least one gun in the truck. And guess where they drove those trucks? To school. You could go at my high school, and there'd be several pickup trucks there with guns in the back window. We didn't shoot people. We didn't shoot people. Why, why are young people, you know, they said they're 18, they're, they're, you know, they're young people. Why are they doing this? Hey, the devil's still working. The devil is still working. And Jesus said, how long is it going to be? Oh, faith is, oh, oh the Bible's, the Bible's uh, a myth book and prayer. That, that's ridiculous. That, that's an old religious crutch. Well, hey, listen, now we're getting what we paid for. That's why, that's why we spend so much time at what's on your phone. What are you thinking about? What, what are you, hey, listen, the place is clean and swept. The thing about a young person is this. When they're born, it's like a brand new apartment. It's just empty, right? Empty here, empty here. Amen? That's not a bad thing. Uh, we're, we don't have time to read it, but I was going to take you to Proverbs. The Bible calls that a simple person. Simple person doesn't, it's not a bad term. It just means you're, you're naive to things. You don't know about it. Now, let me just leave you with this. The place is clean and swept. Okay? The devil loves moving in a clean and swept place. No, he'll trash it, but he wants it like that when he moves in. There's got to be room for him. But God wants a clean and sweat place too. That's what God's looking for. See, that's what we're trying to do with our young people. The place is clean and swept. Let's let God move in. Because if God doesn't move in, there's just room for somebody else. Now, I don't know what's going to happen, but there's room for somebody else. Um, I was looking up a couple words, amusement. I'm not against amusement parks. I mean, you know, they're fun. Amen? We, we go to them. Uh, but amusement, let me just read this real quick. Uh, the origin is early 17th century. Uh, it means a diversion of attention. From the French, amuser, and then it says, see, amuse. So I looked up amuse. It's from the late 15th century. It means to delude or deceive, um, to entertain, to, dis to distract you, to stare stupidly. You know what it means? It means you're, it's, 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 it's helping you. It's, it's keeping your attention so you don't have to think. 
That's what an amusement is. And then I looked up, it says to see muse. So I looked up muse. Muse means to be absorbed in thought. To be absorbed in thought. So you go, you go somewhere or you go for some entertainment, you don't have to think about it. You just sit there and laugh and jiggle and go, you know, get your jollies and whatever, right? That's fine, you know, you watch YouTube, you know, for 24 hours and, you know, that's amusement. But to, to, to muse is to think. And, and there's nothing wrong with an amusement unless it causes you to never think. You have to think. Let me read you a couple verses. Um, in Luke chapter 3, verse, let me just read these. Verse 15, it says, As the people were in expectation, all men mused in their hearts of John whether he was Christ or not. Hey, don't just, hey, listen, don't just, uh, Pastor Connor said it, so that's it. What's the Bible say? What's the Bible say? Uh, well, that's what my church teaches. Well, great, but what's the Bible say about what your church teaches? Well, that's what my grandmother, that's a tough one. That's what my grandmother believed, and she was, she was, that was grandma. I understand that. But what's the Bible say about what your grandma said? Uh, the Bible says in Psalm 143, verse 5, it says, I remember the days of old. I meditate on all thy works. I muse on the work of thy hands. I think about God. I'm, I'm, I'm consumed in thought with the Lord. Psalm 39, verse 3, it says, My heart was hot within me, while I was musing, the fire burned. You know why people are not on fire for God? Because we're not there. We're leaving it empty. We're leaving space. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, it says, Finally, my brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, virtue is victory. Praise, man, you're happy when you have victory. It says if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. You have to be consumed with God. So, let me see your phone. Let me see your history. Let me see how long you've been on it. I'm, I'm, I'm working on that. I mean, and, uh, you know, Brother Tim makes fun of me but because he'll call me and I don't answer for a day. I'm trying to not be on my phone so much. Just, you know, it's not, it's not that you're searching bad stuff, but it's just you don't have to think about the Lord. Um. Uh, the thing about adults is it's harder for the devil, I think, a little bit because the place is not clean and swept. It's already full of other stuff. Maybe not horrible stuff, but it's just full. It's harder for him to have, but with a young person, it's just wide open. That's why God gives them to you. That's why they shouldn't make decisions that the world wants them to make when they're 12 years old. That's not, that's not on a, you know, it, it was, it, it's, it's been that way for years. I remember when I was a bus captain, um, I'd say, hey, does little Johnny want to come to church? And I'd get old Johnny. And the, you know what the mom and dad would say? Yeah, it's up to him. If he wants to go, let him go. Now, that's not what a parent should say, but I was glad to hear it. Hey, yeah, candy and, you know, whatever. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, Johnny wants to come. 
Johnny would come to church, and guess what? Johnny got saved. Woo! Praise the Lord. And so I said, well, Johnny, let's go back and talk to mom and dad. And he'd go back and talk to mom and dad. Hey, Johnny got saved. I go through it all. And I said, Johnny wants to get baptized. Can Johnny get baptized? Ah, he's too young to make those decisions. Hey, listen, the devil's always going to fight it. But I'm tell you what, I'm excited about Vacation Bible School for lots of reasons. But one is, is that we get to get some young people in to try to move God in, help God move in. Um, well, there's more, but we're out of time. I just want to leave you with that thought. And, and we just went over too much to really emphasize anything. But Jesus said to that, he said, oh, what faithless generation. In other words, it's not that you don't believe in God. It's not that you don't believe in being a good person. It's not that you don't even believe the Bible, maybe. But he said, but there's stuff going on around you. And Jesus said, you got to believe me. This is, this is a real thing, a real thing. And it will affect you. We don't see it, but it's there. And, um, well, let's pray. Father, as we come to you this morning, um, Lord, I pray that you'd help us, please, as your people, to, to be in a place in our... Lord, that's why the Bible is so important and prayer is so important to spend time with you that we get the right perspective. Lord, without you, we're powerless. We're powerless to help. We're powerless to change. And God, we do pray. We thank you for our children and our young people. And God, we pray that you'd help us as a church to hold back the wicked one, that there, uh, at the very least, that there'd be somewhere else he could go that would be easier. With their heads bowed this morning, let me just ask you this. As a Christian today, maybe God spoke in your heart about some things and, and, um, and you'd just like to say, God, I need your help. I want your help. And, and um, in, my, in my mind and in my heart, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put forth some effort to, to put up a wall for this. He might be looking and he might get somebody, but he, I, I, just, I just don't want him to get me or my family. And, and, um, and I need God's help. And God spoke to my heart. Would you just slip your hand up in prayer? Amen. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Anyone else, Pastor? I should have raised my hand. Anybody else? Amen. God bless you. Yes. Thank you. And God knows. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. God knows what that means when you put your hand up. God knows what that means. And so why don't you do business with the, with the Lord as, as he sees fit. Let me just ask you this real quick. Maybe there's somebody here today that say, Pastor, I'm just not even, I'm not even saved. Would you pray for me? I'm not even saved. I need to be saved. Would you just raise your hand in prayer? Anybody at all? All right, let's stand, please, with our heads bowed if you need to come. Why don't you let the Lord have his way? Father, please bless now our time of invitation as we move on the decision that you've uh, shared with us today and help us. In Jesus' name we pray. As the music plays, why don't you come? Why don't you come?
Amen. Amen. Oh, all right, you may be seated for just a moment. And uh, we have the Villa Lobus family coming, uh, David and Jennifer, and uh, they're coming to, uh, they feel like God wants them to be part of the Patuxent Baptist Church family, so they're coming to join this morning. So if you're excited, say amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We thank the Lord for that. Amen. So. Just a wonderful, wonderful family. And um, did you guys get saved uh, up at Clinton at Independent? Oh, okay. And uh, so I've uh, been there for years and uh, um, couldn't find a house, no, no room in the inn, and they bought one down here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. See, there is a good in this uh, crunch. Amen. So, no, we're excited. We feel like the, if, if the Lord did that, that the Lord brought you here. And we're so excited. So, uh, so why don't you guys just stay there for a moment, and um, and our folks are going to just come and and uh, thank thank uh, the Lord and uh, congratulate you and welcome you to the church family. Amen. Amen. Hey guys, thanks for visiting with us. It's so great to have you. And Robles says, "I'm glad you made it back safe." Amen. And Maravik, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good to see you again. Amen. So. All right, well, let's all stand. Come by and let them know you're excited they're here. And um, uh, bus workers need to be dismissed. Okay, well, if you're a bus worker.